Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday morning to you all. Hope you guys are getting up and feeling well out there. It is Friday, so I imagine most of us are, but regardless, hope you guys are doing well out there and having a great start to your morning. Got you a big update this morning talking about what's going to happen with the weather for today, but I understand a lot of people are wondering what's going to happen this weekend, especially for you folks tuning in in the southeast, uh, clinging to a little bit of hope that maybe your area especially if you live outside the mountains, could uh, see a little bit of snow sometime this weekend. So I'm going to give you an update on that towards the second half of the video. But of course, we're going to talk about what's going to happen today um, in the beginning part of this video. So there's a lot going on, a lot coming up. We know that this weekend storm is going to be impactful for a lot of people. But I want to already mention that there's already something I'm eyeballing uh, next week. A lot of people already know there's going to be, I think, a, a two-day severe weather episode, and I think this one could be the, ha have the potential to be significant. So we're gonna we're gonna eventually work our way towards that to when we get, I would say, to about Super Bowl Sunday, and we'll really begin to break that down extensively for you guys because I think a lot of people get get impacted by a pretty nasty severe weather event sometime next week, really talking about Wednesday and Thursday. So we are going to dive into that for you folks wondering, hey, what about this this severe weather I'm, I'm hearing about? So trust me, we're going to get deep into that. I might be chasing that one day next week, but we'll figure out what's going to happen. We've got a super busy schedule trying to, uh, you know, coach soccer and uh, just, uh, yeah, a lot going on full-time job, but you guys know all that. But Anyways, if you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. It goes a long way, and I really appreciate it. Uh, I want to uh, give a shout-out to Sam. He gave me a super thanks yesterday, $50, you know, that, and that means the world. I mean, that's a lot of money. Uh, so so thank you all, you know, who occasionally do that, who join the channel, who just support me by subscribing and liking the video. It means the absolute world, and I really appreciate you all for that. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, pl please put those in the comments below so I can pray over it. And so others can do so too. Hit me up on Twitter, guys. I'm telling you, it's a great way to follow along. It's not always super duper serious. We like to cut jokes, uh, you know, friendly jokes every once in a while. And um, yeah, it's a great way to follow along and get uh, up to date information. Facebook also, but I'm much more active on Twitter. But let's get rolling. Water vapor loop. This is our upper low that's going to get cut off here shortly, and it's starting to tilt a little bit more. If you kind of look really hard, I'm not going to pull up the old uh, cursor or anything right now, but it's kind of beginning to tilt like this. It'll begin to tilt over Texas, and we'll close off somewhere in this region right here. And when it starts to close off, that's when it really will start to have that negative tilt, which is when it does like this and that is when it will strengthen over areas of the southeast and provide a lot of precipitation some in the form of snow so elsewhere not a whole lot going on you already have an active jet down here that's going to bring and continue to bring rounds of rain it's going to be an epic washout of a weekend for the southeast okay so if you're looking for an excuse to just not do anything uh this weekend chill inside read a book whatever whatever it is you like to do when you're inside you know, deep cleaning of the house. This weekend is a fantastic weekend to do it because most people in Georgia, the Carolinas, even areas of Florida, even areas, you know, in Tennessee, Alabama, it's just, you're not going to be able to do much outside. So let's keep rolling. Watches and warnings. There's not a lot going on. You still got winter weather advisories and one lingering winter storm warning in Northern Maine and uh, still some wind advisories and high wind warnings ongoing as it's still very windy in the northeast this morning. Flood watch is up down here. These will probably get extended north throughout the day. And one thing that you'll notice by the time some of you folks watch this is you will probably have some winter storm watches that are issued for the mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina, including like Nashville, maybe Knoxville, maybe uh, definitely Boone, the Banner Elk area, areas of south southwest uh, North Carolina. So winter storm watches will be posted by the time some of you folks watch this video. I can almost guarantee it. Kind of like the Storm Prediction Center always upgrades uh, their, um, uh, their, their graphics about an hour after I drop these videos. You can almost guarantee a winter storm watch will get issued here in the next few hours. Um, there is a chance for severe storms today. There's a marginal risk down here for southern sections of Georgia, even a very small section of southern South Carolina and the Big Bend areas and the eastern section of the Panhandle of Florida. Includes Tallahassee and Jacksonville. There is a 2% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in the given location. So uh, some of these storms down here can, can certainly be spinning. We'll be watch out for that. So let's go on and break down the southeast and see what's going to happen. It's There is some moisture out there, but it's definitely not widespread yet. <clears throat> but you got to watch out for this. These storms are rapidly developed this morning and will move onshore from the Gulf of Mexico. See all this storm activity getting very active and more amplified out here from the southern jet. 
this will move on shore and uh, any of these storms right into here into the big bend areas and the panhandle of florida as we're getting into this afternoon, some of these storms could be spinning right in this area of Florida. And then it's just more, more so rain, maybe some, some storms in southern Georgia. But you can see just scattered and smothered areas of showers and downpours in areas of Alabama and uh, Georgia. And this continues. We get into this afternoon, more widespread rain begins to enter areas of South Carolina, really the Midlands Point South. But a washout begins to really take over the area in the panhandle of Florida, southern areas of Alabama and georgia and then as we're getting into deep this evening into the middle of the night this is when just a deep widespread rain really takes over i think it'll be really warm again in areas of florida until the rain moves in a little bit later this afternoon but we stop it here it's about the middle of the night tonight just widespread rains taking over um, a good portion of the southeast and we'll keep this going and uh, you know waking up tomorrow to an absolute washout and here's this low pressure developing and it's if we if we were to keep this going, and I'm going to actually show you the long range latest H triple R model, which is this right here here in a second, because I think it's already doing a very good job of showing the evolution of how this can happen. I know a lot of people are like, "Mitch, show me the Nam. The Nam looks awesome for Atlanta. The Nam is a crap model, guys. I just I'm going to go on and say it. It's it's done well with certain events, but I don't think it's been upgraded in years. It's just not a great model." Rainfall just between now and the next 24 hours, you can expect one to as much as three inches of rain here in areas of the Panhandle of Florida, especially tonight in southern areas of Georgia. Here in these orange yellow areas, maybe one to two inches of rain, maybe a half an inch of rain in Columbia, and then the eastern and southeastern and southern areas of South Carolina could potentially get certainly some um, uh, some some rain today. I'll, I'll back it up to this really quick. One thing I want to note. And I was going to talk about, you know what, I will. I'm going to talk about this area in the south central range right here because this little area of moisture right here is very interesting. So we'll talk about that here in a second. The northeast, um, the, the rest of this winter storm will wrap up for northern Maine. And then we'll have some backside snow showers that gets kicked up this evening for western areas of New York State. These could be flying through areas of Cleveland, northeast Ohio, Erie, Pennsylvania, northwest Pennsylvania. Um North, northeast ohio northwest pennsylvania i'm sorry uh but some this could be a pretty intense little streamer but it's just it's just not going to be locked in it's going to kind of fly through uh ontario and erie and then just diminish as we get into the overnight hours but snowfall between now and the next 24 hours you know you could certainly see certain areas around watertown a couple inches of snow northern new york state a few inches of snow but certainly not a ton but certainly you know you put another coating of snow on the ground or on top of other snow that's already on the ground South Central U.S. Interesting, uh, you know, for whatever reason on radar scope, uh, the the um, the the reports aren't coming up. So I don't know if there one is nobody in the lower 48 reporting any anything out there in the weather world, or two, or uh, radar scope um, is having an issue with reports. But there's going to be an area of moisture. In fact, in in Midland, Texas, there was already some snow falling earlier this morning. Um, but there's going to be an area of moisture that really gets going here. In fact, it probably already has, and. I really think that this area of moisture could mix with a little bit of snow. Okay. You know, in fact, I'll just go on and try to bring up radar scope on the fly here. And let's see. I'm going to go to, let's see if we can go to Arkansas. Let's go to Fort Smith. I think that's, a, yep. See, you got a little bit of moisture right here. Okay. And, and it, it looks convective in nature. So this will continue. And let me see if I can move my picture out of the way and get this in motion right here. This will continue throughout the day. There's going to be some pivoting with this moisture that's going to, it's going to dig down to northern Louisiana. This moisture right here in Arkansas, it could mix with some snow. It might already be doing so. Okay, so this is part of that upper trough, upper level low that's going to dig down, get cut off, and bring its own cold air. This is the beginning stages of it right into here. And eventually it'll swing down, connect with more moisture, and bring our winter storm for areas of the southeast. Okay. So it's right in here. Watch for this moisture. We get into this afternoon, even down here in northern Louisiana, I wouldn't be surprised one bit if somehow this mixes with a little bit of snow. And then this swings through, and we'll see what happens as we're getting into tomorrow with this before we crank up our snowstorm for the mountains of North Carolina, Tennessee, and surrounding regions. Up here in the north central U.S., not a whole lot to talk about, guys. Uh, pretty quiet. One of your more quieter days of the month so far. Uh, so, you know, enjoy it. Uh, definitely nothing really going on up here. Temperatures, it'll be cold up here, pockets of colder air, but then there's pockets of, you know, areas that are going to be above freezing. This is kind of weird with the H-Trip oil model showing up here in the kind of the northern Midwest area, but 
you know, one thing's for sure is I think the western areas of the Dakotas are going to be kind of warm, and then the eastern areas are going to be colder. But southeast, another warm day. I think this is the last really warm day until next week. Uh, but I think you could get all the way into the 60s into Washington, D.C. Again, widespread 70s in the Carolinas, Florida. Um, I definitely think you'll get widespread 80s. And then areas, you know, right into this area, more typical just February weather. So let's give you an update on what's going on with this system. We'll talk about the Euro first. Okay, we'll start it off around 9, 10 a.m. Saturday morning. It's raining down here in Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama. You get this going, we'll stop it here. This is around dinner time, Saturday evening. This, you know, tomorrow evening, we can say now, right? Because it's Friday today, obviously. What I'm noticing is, is there's some higher terrain right here in Alabama. Elevation is going to be huge in this storm. Okay, so... I mean, the Euro is saying you're already trying to mix with a little bit of snow in North, North Georgia, even areas in Alabama right into here. Snow beginning to break out in southwest sections of uh, North Carolina. It helps that this storm moves in in a pretty favorable time of the day, which is in the middle of the night for you winter weather fans. You stop it right here. It's about midnight, 1 a.m. in the morning. The Euro wants any kind of rain switching to snow for Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, Atlanta right into here, you know, you're, you're mixing with rain and snow. The mountains of North Georgia, I think, could get accumulating snow from this. Even a little bit of spots of mixtures right into here, here in northern North Carolina, well outside the mountains. The, the triad, the foothills of the North Carolina mountains and the Piedmont and the upstate South Carolina, look at here. Look really close to the Greer. You're mixing with a little bit of snow. Okay, and then you stop it right here Sunday morning. It's showing just a thumping of heavy, wet snow. Chattanooga, you're pulling for the Euro here. Okay, this is you're waking up Super Bowl Sunday morning and it's just ripping snow for you guys. Same thing for North Georgia, especially north to really, I would say, northeast Alabama. Snowing. One thing I'm watching here, guys, and, and I'm not going to pull out the, the ice. Ooh, almost said a bad word. Not going to pull up the ice map until tonight to have a little bit more confidence is there's consistency with showing some kind of icing in the mountains. It's kind of weird. All right, and I think this is because of this placement of this low pressure. It's really close by, so it's giving a warm nose to these areas of the mountains. There's a chance that this could be a down player on snow. We'll see what happens, okay, but it starts out as it looks like a wintry mix. But one thing I'm consistently noticing is a mix here in the upstate of South Carolina, even northeast Georgia, okay? You take it to about mid-morning Sunday, all right? It is absolutely snowing like crazy in the Cumberland Plateau. I see that dark blue. That is heavy snow. Okay, I think the valleys are struggling, but I think eventually rates will come over and eventually y'all will switch to some snow. I don't know how much you're going to get in the valley, but it's going to be a tricky forecast for the valley. But I mean, you stop it right here. This is mid-Sunday morning. Okay, I mean, it's snowing in Atlanta. It's snowing in Greenville, Spartanburg. And you keep this rolling eventually to flip back to rain, but you stop it about mid-afternoon Sunday and it is snowing like crazy in northeast Tennessee and then the higher elevations of Tennessee and North Carolina. And then some heavy snow, wintry mix begins to move into the mountainous regions of um, Virginia. But, man, somebody's going to jackpot here outside the mountains. I, I don't know who's going to jackpot outside the mountains, but somebody's going to get under an epic band and you'll just be in the hills. But, man, it, it's going to be really close for you folks in southeast Kentucky. But uh, really, as this is kind of pulling out, more cold air law filters in behind this L, this low pressure. And uh, you'll switch from just slop, wintry mix, to just the thumping of heavy snow here in western areas of Virginia. I think Sunday evening, and then this pulls out. And by the time you're waking up Monday morning, it's over. Latest GFS, you know, kind of the same deal, guys. You know, this moves in Sunday, I'm sorry, Saturday evening. Um, you're dealing with mixing issues. A lot of pink keeps showing up here. I really think that this is going to put a just a big screw in the forecast somewhere it's going to be difficult but you got a thumping of just frozen precipitation moving into areas of southwest and western areas of um of virginia and you keep keep this rolling here sunday morning there's that burst of snow from northeast georgia even the upstate of south carolina and then i really think down here uh here in southwest north carolina i think you're going to do better than you are maybe up in boone Maggie Valley area, you know, in the areas and the higher elevations surrounding that area. Just got a, got a feeling that that area is going to do better. But, you know, the, the Euro is really hitting you guys hard in the Cumber, Cumberland Plateau, for example. But the GFS is not. In fact, the GFS is not giving much winter weather love for you folks in eastern Tennessee. 
you know, it does, it's, it's showing this pink here with this little heavier band. I'm sorry, this blue with this heavier band where there's a little bit higher elevation right in here where this plateau is. But, uh, you know, there's the valley, just all rain. The GFS showing all rain. But eventually, you know, you start to switch to all snow and then everybody switches to snow. So it's about midday Sunday. Look at this. You know, the, the, there's, a, there's a little bit of that rain snow mix in the upstate of South Carolina. And then you stop it right here, guys. I mean... Uh, you know, you're, you're very close to switching to maybe some snow, rain, snow mix in the Charlotte area. I think you're going to mix in all these areas along the 85 corridor. But, um, you know, the GFS wants you guys in like Shelby, Lincolnton, Hickory to just flat out switch to snow for a period of time, sometimes Sunday. Uh, you know, Greensboro, you know, Winston-Salem, you know, certainly could switch to snow. Um, Elizabethan, you know, you guys certainly could eventually switch to snow. snow. Okay, then you go to Sunday afternoon, and then it starts ripping like crazy in the higher elevations of Virginia right here. And the GFS, a little bit further north uh, west, brings kind of an area of snow for you folks in southeast Kentucky. And then it turns into, you know, a pretty significant event for southern sections of West Virginia. But it's going to be interesting, guys. I think the most fascinating part of this storm is who can get a surprise outside the mountains because it, you know if you didn't t tune in the last night's video not a whole lot's changed but tune in you know i break down the fact that i think somebody maybe from atlanta to greenville spartanburg to charlotte someone's gonna get a surprise i'm not talking about a surprise half a foot of snow but um i'm not gonna it's not gonna shock me one bit if you know we get into sunday morning and it's snowing in atlanta it's just not. It's not going to shock me. I'm not going to say you heard it here first, but it's not going to shock me one bit. It really isn't. So let's take a look at the latest uh, HRRR model because I think it's doing a really good job. It only goes out to about midnight Saturday night, 1 a.m. Here comes the heavy moisture. This is around 3 p.m. You can already see little hints of blue right here. And this is starting to mix up. The HRRR model does a great job of picking up on elevation. Okay, so you stop it right here. It's around 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Heavy rain, heavy, heavy rain everywhere outside the mountains. But you start to mix with snow and turn to snow with some of these higher elevations. There's higher elevations right here when you enter out of South Carolina into North Carolina. Okay, that, that I really think here in these southern mountains could certainly get some uh, heavier snow. I don't pretend to know every geographical mountain range or individual mountain range in southwest uh, North Carolina. There's a lot of great people to follow for that that I need to recommend a lot more. Uh, one guy's name is Evan. One guy's name is Hunter. They do a great job in this region when it comes to elevation-dependent storms. But, you know, I'm telling you, a 1,000 feet make a huge difference in this storm. But if you keep this going and we can, we can only go out to well, – this is 1 a.m. Sunday morning. One thing I'm already noticing is – Here's that backside upper level low energy that is going to thump somebody with heavy snow. What I can already tell you is you're already trying to switch the snow in the Cumberland Plateau. It's all rain in the valley. And I think the A-Shipper model is picking up on that very well. That's why I told you guys, you know, if you're going to make a trip to the mountains, do it on the North Carolina side. That's just my gut feeling. Okay, I might be wrong, might lead you astray, but do it somewhere in this area of the mountains right here. Okay. Heard some people mention Maggie Valley. I think that's a great area to, to, to check out. It's a beautiful area, Lake Junaluska, right by. Um, and and I've, I've, I've went there many times in the summer and the fall. It's a beautiful, beautiful, just chill area with Waynesville right nearby, restaurants. And, um, you know, if you just want to relax, it's not really touristy. I mean, there's not a, you know, huge, it's not like Gatlinburg. I love Gatlinburg. But, you know, it's just a chill area. There's some areas you can go sledding in. Um check it out you know i'm sure they're, they're getting booked up solid now but it's a tricky system and elevation is huge okay but you stop it right here and i want you to look at the pink that is a mix now if you go down here and you know you, you look at this graphic right in here it's saying it's sleet and i, and I think you know i mentioned that several days ago that i didn't think sleet was going to be a big deal with this but i lied sleet is because you got a warm nose so i think that you know sometime already and i'm going to be fascinated to see what the next long range h triple r model shows because it's going to take us out another six hours which will take us out the sunday morning uh you know about 7 a.m but you see these dark blues that is extremely heavy snow falling heavy wet snow falling now don't pay too much attention to these little weird gaps i do think there's going to be some kind of break between the main push 
and then this backside precipitation that could add an additional lot of snow for certain areas. But one thing I want you to notice is you see these pockets of pink right into here. That's a, maybe a rain snow mix and you're already flirting with mixing in Greenville, Spartanburg area, you know, Shelby, Lincolnton, Hickory, Statesville, um, Charlotte's really close by. So it's going to be really interesting. Who, who, who could, who could surprise? I don't really think somebody will. Now, are you talking about Augusta, the Columbia, the Fayetteville, you know, Macon, Georgia? No, I mean, I, I just, I think you need a miracle for, for that to happen down here. I'm not trying to disappoint anybody, but I, I'm telling you, you know, I really think in this little corridor right into here, somebody's going to surprise right into here. So, um, you know, uh, latest snowfall predictions, you know, this is the Euro latest European ensemble. Uh, you know, you can chop, chop some of these probably 25, 30%, but uh, it likes Asheville, you know, saying seven inches. Uh, and then this area right here up I-40, it goes up to the Smokies. Uh, then eventually at the Gatlinburg, you know, several inches of snow is going to fall. Boone, a few, several inches of snow. But I mean, look at this. It extends down the North Georgia, Northeast Alabama, the Cumberland Plateau. There's a pretty decent mean into this area. I mean, there's a one inch snowfall mean in Atlanta. So take that how you want. Um, you look at the latest GFS ensemble, and I would argue that it's kind of went down, but you know, it's still over. In fact, I would argue it's probably one of the worst ones yet, but it extends a little bit deeper into Virginia. Okay. So Virginia is, is a tricky area. Once you get here in the Northern sections and Northwest sections of Virginia, it's a big wild card up here. And I know I haven't talked to much on you folks up here, but I'm really more confident down here in southwest Virginia, the mountains of North Carolina, and the higher elevations of the mountains of Tennessee. Cumberland Plateau is a wild card, okay? North Georgia is a wild card. Upstate South Carolina, wild card. Piedmont and foothills of North Carolina, a wild card. It really is, okay? So let's look at the National Weather Service forecast. One thing I'll mention right off the dot, hey, you know, they're saying maybe a dusting's possible. They got that tenth of an inch of snow for these weird little areas just kind of scattered and smothered in North Georgia. So, hey, I would expect that this gets kind of the same way in upstate South Carolina, even more so in the Piedmont, okay? One wild thing I, I, I can see right here is if you squint right here, right here and just northwest of uh, Shelby County, there's an area of kind of higher elevations like mountains right here. It's kind of like the foothills. And it's saying, hey, a couple inches of snow could fall in this area. You know, so, so everything's elevation dependent. So, yeah, I mean... It's a tricky one. Like I said, if you're going anywhere, do not book a place like a thousand feet up in the air. Try to get two, three thousand feet up in the air. If I, if I was trying to book a vacation, but um, they're they're kind of lowballing you guys in Southwest Virginia, uh, but they might be on to something. But uh, listen, you know they're not showing anything in these areas I just mentioned. But I would not be surprised if if something happens. But we'll give you an update tonight. I want to mention that tonight. I'm watching my girls. It's just me and the girls tonight. Um, my wife's staying at her mom's because they're doing stuff tomorrow. So I will get a video out tonight, no doubt. But it's going to be a little bit later. It's probably going to drop maybe 8, 30, 9 o'clock. I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe a little earlier. Um, but um, it's going to be a later video, so don't expect it around 6, 37 or anything like that. But it's honestly, it's probably a good thing because we'll we'll get even more model guidance. Okay, so stay tuned, you know, because um, it's a tricky one, man. It really is, but uh, it, it could be a it could be a, a a good surprise for certain areas. So, that's all I got. God bless all y'all. Have a great Friday, and I'll talk to you this evening.